my very own little bit of earth. It might not sound like much, but to me it means a lot more than just a spot to plant vegetables. My grandmother fought for this spot right here. You can't imagine it now, can you? Having to fight to own a tiny spot of soil. It's passed down through the family, you see. That's how I came to own it. Susan Birch is my grandmother's name. Well, Susan also when she got married in 1931. I suppose she didn't really set out to own an allotment. It's just how things turned out in the end. But why now, John? You've been left to look after this family and keep us afloat for the last four years. Why now? I don't know, Mary. Too many people have been killed. There's not enough people fighting. We can't win this war without men. I've been called, so I have to go. I have some savings for you to live on whilst I'm away. Now listen, the men in the allotment have spoken about what to do if you were called off. You are to nominate a person of your choice to look after the plot whilst you're away. And who could we nominate? There's no one left in the street. Surely Mother and I could look after it whilst you're away. I know the war has changed a lot of things in this country, Susan. There most certainly will not be a woman on that plot in my lifetime. My savings will cover the cost of the plot until you find someone. And what if we don't? Your savings will only last so long and they might cover the cost of the allotment. But how are we going to live? I don't know. Susan, leave your father for now. We'll talk about this more later. After six months paying rent costs to the Allotment Society, Jonathan's savings ran out. And with no money coming into the household and very little food, Mary, my great-grandmother, went to speak with the chairman of the Allotment Society to see if she could be the nominated person to look after the plot. After a short discussion, they refused. It was my grandmother who really took things into her own hands from then on. In July 1918, she arranged to visit the Laurie family, for whom her father worked for before he was conscripted. They owned a large house called Bellencroft at Merry Hill and Bills Lane, and they owned a glass beveling company in Horsley Fields. It was from then on that things really started to change for our family. I do see your predicament, Miss Birch, but we simply can't be seen to employ such a young lady in such a dangerous working environment. You do understand? I understand that it is dangerous, sir, but I also fear the dangers of living without food and money. That I understand all too well. With regards to the allotment plot, surely you could write to the society and ask to pay off the plot and no longer have ownership. I don't think it would be the right thing to do. My father adored that allotment. To give it up would be to admit defeat and say goodbye completely, without knowing if he's to return. How old are you, Miss Birch? 21, ma'am. She is young, Edward. What are you getting at, Elizabeth? If we were to employ Miss Birch at the factory over the next six months, she'll benefit from six months' worth of wages. This will provide time in which we can come to a decision about how to resolve this problem. The business needs Miss Birch just as much as she needs us. Fine. Six months and um, then we'll review things. Thank you, Mum. I work very hard, Mum. Don't you worry. Now, what's to be done about the Allotment Society? Let me think on it. There's some way we can get around this whole problem. We just haven't thought of it yet. Mrs. Laurie was true to her word. She employed my grandmother for a further six months. And during that time, they hatched a plan. She was adamant that my family should have ownership of our allotment plot, with or without a male nominee. And she was right that a protest letter would fall on deaf ears, but not a letter of support, with a very generous offer of 12 pounds to be used towards a silver cup competition amongst the members of the society. Sadly, 
Susan's father died during the war. But after her six month trial period was up, Mr. and Mrs. Laurie agreed to take Susan on indefinitely. Throughout the 1920s, Mrs. Laurie contributed further prizes to the Allotment Society, including a rose and a fruit bowl. She also wrote a letter to her local WI representative to be forwarded to all of its members, informing them about Miss Birch and her situation with the Graysley Allotment Society. Little did the society know what was about to hit them. But there is no balance sheet! Yes, we can't possibly yes. audit any profit at the shed without any proper accounts! Yes. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. The only suggestion I can make is to adjourn this meeting for the eleventh time if we simply cannot reach a decision about what is to be done. I agree. Yes, yes. yes. But before we leave, there is the matter of the letters. Ah, yes. Okay. The letters. They have been piling up over the last few um, months. It really is a monstrosity that after years of fighting and finally obtaining the vote for women over the age of 30, they are unable to tend for God's own land. Yes, all right, Mr. Turner. We don't want the WI on our case, Alderman. Not if we can help it. Fine, yes. fine, fine. I hereby rule that there is nothing to prevent women from being allowed into the allotment society. But it wasn't that easy. The society had gotten used to Miss Birch and her regular visits, and no matter how hard Susan had tried to obtain her father's allotment plot, there was always something more pressing that needed to be tended. It wasn't until the 1930s that Susan had finally had enough. I hereby grant a wheelbarrow to the Graysley and District Allotment Society for the use of all of its members. I've had enough. You can't keep sidestepping me for yet another year. Ah, Miss Birch. It's Mrs. Owl's up now, thank you very much. But you wouldn't know that since you never read any of my letters. Well, congratulations. I'm sure your husband must be thrilled. If you won't read any of my letters, then perhaps you'll read this one. Dear sirs, it pains me to learn that after many years, of my support on the Allotment Society that you have come to treat a fellow human in this manner. You will immediately give Mrs. Alsop her father's land or I will remove my support forthwith. Yours sincerely, Mrs. Laurie. Oh, if this still does nothing, I can assure you I'll show you how passionate I am in a much less understanding manner. Well, I do believe we owe what is yours and what has always been yours. And on behalf of the Allotment Society, we apologise. Well. That year, Susan finally won ownership of her father's allotment plot. But it wasn't without its trials and tribulations. In the summer of 1930, police were asked to investigate damage done to Mr Turner's plot. Some say that it was Susan taking out her revenge whilst others believe that it was a group of gentlemen who were unhappy with Mr Turner, sticking up for and apologising to my grandmother. Who can say which is true? Mrs Laurie continued to express her interest in society by donating money to pay for the Silver Cup. By July 1933, the results of the Silver Cup were in, and this decision brought on a powerful protest, and an amended prize list had to be produced. Not in my it's day. It's an outrage. Terrible. Gentlemen, I can now announce that we have agreed to reconsider the points awarded. <laughs> Therefore, I can now reveal that a first place goes to a Mr. Hughes. Yeah. Yeah. A second place to a Mr. Bailey. Oh. And a third place to a Mrs. Allsop. She was the first woman to receive a prize of the allotments and on July 24th, 1933, the Mayor, Sir Charles Mander, and the Mayoress attended to present the prizes to the winners. Congratulations for home and country.
So you see, it's not just a patch of land. There's history in this soil. Mrs. Laurie was seen as somewhat the fairy godmother of the society. And her support was reported both in the Wolverhampton Times and the Express and Star. But it was never truly recorded that she attended the allotments. I believe just what the papers reported about this allotment in the 20s. It should be maintained as a work and playground for both the men and the women of the neighbourhood for many years to come.